Welcome into another edition of Gamecocks Film Room. I'm Dakota Watson with Gamecocks Plus, and we have Coach uh, Pete Limbo here, the special teams coordinator at the University of South Carolina. First off, congrats! Just wrapped up the season eight and five overall, a really good year and a fantastic special teams year. I think every analytic you can look at is saying you guys, y'all's group, was just about one or two, and most everything it felt like. Well, I appreciate you saying that, and uh, we get great support from the top down. Uh, Shane is awesome when it comes to supporting our efforts with meeting time and practice time and our players are really bought in and they've bought into the idea that what we do on special teams from a fundamental standpoint is going to make them better players on offense and defense and, and the more exciting we can make it the more aggressive we can make it uh, the opportunity to create an impact in the game uh, that just gets them more excited to come in this meeting room every day and to find out what's coming next and to be a part of it. And we, we try to make it fun. We try to make it interesting. And um, as we look at some of the most impactful plays of this past season, um, the ones we selected were games that we won. That was a criteria. Um, and you'll see in many of these cases that uh, the score was close and, and it, it obviously put us in a better position to win the game but as sort of a bonus feature what we did along with these top five plays is our theme for the year which was something that coach Beamer and Derek Moore who's our uh, outstanding director of player development came up with was this whole idea of lights camera action and that is stepping into character whether it's when you hit the practice field or you come in the meeting room or you get out there in williams Bryce Stadium, uh, getting into the moment, not letting the moment be too big for you, but, but uh, the whole idea of preparation um, and then putting your best foot forward. And, and so many times this year, uh, we were able to do that from a special team standpoint. So uh, we thought it would be cool to, to share with you guys today. Uh, we've talked in the past a little bit about some of the pop culture and, and the history and the different things we like to incorporate into our special teams meetings in here. So in addition to the uh, top five impactful special teams plays, we've got some of the impactful movies that, uh, that I've suggested to our team at different times um, that, they, that they've got to watch on their own time uh, as, as part of a, a pop culture lesson. I love that you do this and it really is just one more thing that shows how seriously you take special teams and how much time and effort you put into it and then again you said it comes from the top down so you can tell when the special teams coordinator when the head coach care this much about special teams it's going to trickle down the players are really going to get into it they're going to care they're going to get into character like you said and we're going to look at five plays that really changed the games like you said it wasn't just oh that was nice it was an added bonus no no, no these changed the game well and we're trying to develop these young men as complete people in a holistic way and I want these guys to leave here having a great experience and, and to look back and say, I learned something, I became a better man, I became a better person. Um, and who knows, maybe some of this stuff comes in handy at a cocktail party 20 years <laughs> from now. So the first movie that we have was one from my childhood, okay? And, and this was a game changer. You know, I'm 52 and uh, you know, if, if you're of my era, plus or minus, Jaws uh, was an incredibly impactful movie for you. And, and of, cor of course, it's the, the whole idea of the shark and the beach and the summertime and all that. But the, the character development, um, you know, the, the Chief Brody being the city cop who ends up, you know, at this quiet uh, island, um, you know, and uh, semi-retirement job and how that all goes sideways. And then Richard Dreyfuss as Hooper, who's the, the hotshot college kid, you know, uh, from a sophisticated background and a smart guy and all this stuff. And then Robert Shaw, who's just one of my favorite classic movie tough guys who, who left us way before his time uh, as Captain Quint, just, uh, you know, crusty and, and, the, and, and the quotes and the blunt uh, uh, approach to life that he had. Um, you know, it's just awesome, and, and it's one of those movies that you can watch 
a hundred times over and it, and it never gets old. So and every time not want to go to the beach afterwards, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Just, just go in, uh, you know, up, up to your waist, but, uh, it hasn't deterred my kids at all yeah, from perfect. going in the that's water good. at the beach. That's cause they're from a, a different generation. But the first play we selected, um, and we talked about blocking punts early in the season. Um, it's easy to forget that this Georgia state game was a close game here we are up by six in the third quarter, um, and we're going to get the ball back here, but probably without great field position. And uh, we force a punt, and here we go, and, and block a punt, and not only block it, um, but then DQ Smith is able to scoop and score it for a touchdown. Uh, and now we make this a two-score game. We get the crowd back into it. Um, and they came out in a totally different punt scheme, as sometimes will happen in the first game of the season, than, than we expected. Uh, we were expecting a three-man shield. They came out in a two-man shield. And so we had to do a lot of uh, adaptation on the sideline, adjustments on the sideline. Um, and we wanted to continue to put pressure on these guys. A lot of times early in the season, um, it's, it's as much about an opponent screwing something up as it is about you executing. Um, and here Rashad Amos uh, comes clean um, and uses some great technique here uh, to slide his hands across the table and, and take the ball off this punter's foot. Um, this is a combination block and hold up. Um, and, and, uh, and here it is, the scoop and score uh, to make this a two-score game. And the first of five punts that we were able to block, uh, another one to seal this game later on. So. That was the, the, a great win to start the season, great environment in the stadium that night. Can I ask, you mentioned having to make adjustments because they came out on something a little different. First off, you're probably going to see that a lot now because people know limbo ball, right? They know to be ready, so you're probably going to have to get used to that, right? But secondly, is that tougher for special teams when I'm counting, what, about six or seven of these guys are on the field for either offense or defense normally? So it's not like when offense is on the field, you can collect everybody and say, here's what we're going to do, or deep, vice versa. You know, how hard is that? Well, I never carry my phone around uh, on, uh, on game day, but I, I should track how many miles yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I put on, uh, on the GPS uh, on game day because you're constantly running around trying to catch guys on the bench um, as they come off the field um, and, and make those little uh, minute adjustments that might make the difference between uh, success and failure. Um, and, and it's a lot about expecting the unexpected um, um, because it's just the way it is, right? People change during the week, uh, especially when you're a, a high pressure, uh, a punt pressure unit, which, which we try to be. So uh, this was clearly one of those games where we had to do a little thinking on our feet and, and get the guys to, to quickly uh, understand the changes that we wanted to make. Um, and it was, it was far from perfect. Um, but again, sometimes it's as much about um, the opponent screwing something up and, and being in position to take advantage of that as it is about, about you executing. And, and this particular play is a little bit of both. So um, great timing here, great uh, change in momentum. Uh, and a great opportunity to get the crowd back into it in a big way. I don't think we scored on offense again after what this what after that moment, right? So we had two more punt blocks. I think it was 35 was about right. Yeah. So that's I don't think we scored again. So these were big. These had to happen. Well, uh, it was it was a, a tough opponent yeah. um, and a, and a great way to start the year, showing some grit uh, and and coming through some adversity uh, to win that first game. Um, so the second movie is. Of course, one of my all-time favorites, um, and and here we are with another um, police officer. This this is a New York City cop who uh, goes out to visit his wife for a for a quiet, laid-back uh, Christmas out on the West Coast, where she's working in San Francisco, uh, and it turns into uh, one of the greatest thriller movies of all time, uh, and also. Uh, maybe one of the great Christmas movies of, of all time. <laughs> I don't certainly, know if we want to get into that debate. But. That's right, but certainly one of my favorite uh, Christmas movies of all time. Um, but, but Bruce Willis, um, what an incredible actor. And uh, I remember him from when I was a kid in, in the show Moonlighting. And then, of course, his movie career uh, really took off. But uh, 
you know, so many, so many great one-liners from this movie. And uh, uh, this was actually one that, that several of our players had seen. Oh, Not really? as many had seen Jaws. I was gonna, I'd think the opposite, actually, but that's, that's interesting. And if they haven't, it's got to be on their list, right? This is, this, is a, this is a great one. Okay, and then the second play that we selected, there's going to be two plays uh, out of these five from the Clemson game. Um, and this first one, if you go back and you look at the score right here, all right, we're up by a point. We had kicked the field goal to go up. We're up by a point, and there's four and a half minutes left, um, and we've got to punt the ball back to them. All right, and here we are on our own 33-yard line. Um, and, and so, you know, with a normal punt right here, they're going to get the ball back in pretty decent field position, and all they need is a field goal to go back and take the lead. And this one uh, played out exceptionally well uh, for, for many reasons. Obviously, we down it on the three-yard line, so now they've got an awful long way to go to get into field goal range. Um, the second part of it is that we were really hoping uh, to, to get a rugby punt in, in this game because they had a really good returner. We were trying to punt the ball away from him. Um, and it's also late in the game where you might get a team coming after you at this point um, because it was fourth and long here. So that's where you see a lot of, a lot of pressure uh, in, in a situation like that. Because they're not so, expecting a fake, even with you. <laughs> correct. They're not expecting a fake. And uh, so we wanted to move the launch point. You know, punting is a lot like a pass, uh, a drop back pass. You know, if you're always in the same spot every time you drop back pass, eventually somebody's going to draw up a blitz and get to you. So one of the things we like to do punting the football is to move the launch point. So we got the ball on the right hash. Of course, we got a lefty punter and Kai Kroger is one of the best. Um, and here he is doing a great job using all that field space to his left there with that rugby punt. Um, gets enough hang time that our gunners can get down there uh, and make sure that that returner doesn't get overzealous there and try to pick it up. So we gain an extra several yards here of letting that ball roll, take a little time off the clock, pick it up, hand it back to the official. And so now they've got an awfully long way to go to get in a field goal range. I don't think anybody's going to argue that special teams was by far the most critical thing in the fourth quarter for, for this game. And having to punt several times with just a one, one point lead. And then, of course, we'll watch the other play later. I don't want to give it away now, but <laughs> it was big. No, this was huge. And, and at this point, our defense was playing well. Um, and to, to, to challenge these guys at this point in the game to go 60, 70 yards to get in the field goal range, um, you know, that, that gave us uh, a, lot of, a lot of energy and a lot of momentum uh, to, to get out there and get a stop. So this was a, this was a huge play. And, and again, you know, they're still uh, playing it pretty conservative, right. which surprised us a little bit on fourth and long. But the biggest thing here was uh, the execution of the rugby punt, uh, the job by, by the gunners and the long snapper getting down there, um, just perfectly placed and, and also taking some important time off the clock. And like you said, it is important for those gunners to get down quickly because if not, they can still pick up a rugby pine and go. Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. And, uh, and we play some great returners in the SEC. Uh, obviously, Clemson's got outstanding personnel and really our hidden weapon on, on all that. The guy that doesn't get the, the credit he deserves is Hunter Rogers, right? Here's a long snapper. Uh, and people saw him score a touchdown in the bowl game. This guy is an exceptional athlete, runs extremely well, and he's a guy that um, if you're the opponent's punt return unit, you, you better be aware of him and, and his presence from a coverage standpoint. So the fact that they have to be aware of our snapper in coverage often means that they can't think about going out there and doubling one of those gunners.